Hello and welcome to Potter Watch from Page to Screen, episode 25. We're we're at my age. <laughs> <laughs> Although not for much longer. Not for a month. In a mm. month, we'll need so, to go on to the next episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In case our listeners have forgotten or we've got any new people tuning in, our podcast looks into all the differences between Harry po- the Harry Potter books and films. My name's Elizabeth. And I'm Lucy. Last time, we went to Nearly Headless Nick's death day party and discovered some mysterious bloody writing on the walls. Ooh, and that wasn't the writings of... The swear words. <laughs> some bloody, <laughs> some bloody writing. writing. <laughs> <laughs> no, today actual we'll... bloody writing. Yeah, quite literally. <laughs> uh, today, we'll be investigating the Chamber of Secrets, uh, the book's namesake, so mm-hmm. must be important. Dum, dum, dum. But, First, we need to delve into the sorting hat for some questions. Today, Elizabeth will have the honour of asking a Harry Potter question, mm-hmm. and mine will be completely random. So, I guess I'll go first. I just realised that um, I completely glossed over you saying singing the writings on the walls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's. I mean, us breaking into song is kind of just pretty standard at this it's point. It's the norm at this point. It's nothing yeah. new. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> No, not noteworthy in any way. No. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. I, this is such a stupid question, but I okay. think it's quite funny. I think okay. the stupid questions are some of the best ones, though. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if we were to form a band... <laughs> Me and you. Yeah, just us. <laughs> okay. What would our band name be? <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first... I love the idea of forming a band with you. <laughs> I feel like we would be really good. Yeah. <laughs> and me well, and my ukulele. <laughs> yeah. I'll be on triangle You're doing, or like, something. Interpretive dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be like proper like one of those really weird indie like <laughs> Yeah. I feel like we we'd give off like Simon and Garfunkel vibes. Yes. Mm. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely need um, to start like rolling up the bottoms of my trousers and wearing susp- um not suspenders, what are they called, braces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wearing braces. Um. <laughs> oh, I. Oh yeah. my gosh, do you have any ideas? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no clue. Um. The Harry Potters. That's that's just the Harry obvious, Potters. Though. What what else mm. do we have in common apart from Harry apart Potter? From Harry Potter. <laughs> We're both English. <laughs> We're both white. <laughs> yeah. We both have um, brown hair. Uh, 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 I don't know. I feel like have you seen Parks and Rec? No. Okay. In in Parks and Rec, um, Chris Pratt's character is in a band, mm-hmm. and the kind of running gag with his band is that the name changes like every time he mentions oh, it. Oh yeah. I feel like we would. Yeah. We, like we would be so non-committal that we would just mm-hmm. change it any time we. Yes. We, we talk about it. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, I, I was kind of, I kind of had an idea, but then you distracted me. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> no, it's I'll okay. just let the creativity flow for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Do some brainstorming. Oh, what did I have? Oh yeah, like our generations, like so you're oh. Gen Z, right? Yeah. And yeah. I'm millennial. So like millennials, <laughs> <laughs> millennials with a Z. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I feel like that's like on the right side of cringe. <laughs> millennials, and we just do kind of like I don't know what music does millennials make. Okay, like I have a I have a <laughs> I have a Spotify playlist uh-huh. entitled. Hang on. Spotify. Millennials. I don't know whether I <laughs> No, no, but we can only all of our song titles have to have an S in there somewhere, but every S is replaced with a Z as well. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so it's like So it's um called Oh no, I don't want premium. Okay. It's called Late Nineties, Early Two Thousands British School Disco. Oh <laughs> British yeah. primary school disco. Okay. So it has it has Songs such as the Ketchup Song, Li- Living mm-hmm. the Vida Loca, Mambo mm-hmm. Number Five, Blue Dabba Dee Dabba Die, It's Raining <laughs> Men, We're Going to Ibiza, 
We like to party by the Venga, bo- Venga Boys. Mm-hmm. Don't stop moving by S Club Set. <laughs> so we exclusively put out primary school disco music. Yeah. That's the only... we. O- that's the, Our only gigs are at, like, town halls for <laughs> They're actually nine-year-olds. at primary school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Even yeah. Even though no. none of the current generation would get it at no. all. No. <laughs> <laughs> like... This was our dances. Well, I don't know mm-hmm. what kind of music you had at dances, but that was my dance. Like, those yeah. were my dance music. It was like, a lot of, like, outdated by yes. a few years yeah. pop Always, music. Always, like, got at least one song by Bob the Builder in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, so we're children's entertainers. Yes. We're like millennials. With and we like, have songs like that are, like... Like, spotty jeans... With mm-hmm. with um, oh, I see braces, big glasses, mm-hmm. and like bow ties, but with t shirts, so the bow ties are just around hand. <laughs> <laughs> and they're elast the the like elastic ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Nice. Uh, millennials with a Z. No, our full title could be Millennials with a Z. Yes. Or like yes. that's in brackets. Yeah, it's like millennials. And when we like insist that every time somebody says it, yeah, they, they have to say it like that. Millennials, millennials, yeah, wow. with a Z. <laughs> it's quite, like like the the artist formerly known as Prince, but it's yeah. millennials mm-hmm. with a Z. Yeah, yeah. All right, I I mean, because I feel like you know, generation. I don't know why I think. I have I have this uh, th- this stereotype about Gen Zers that Gen Zers are quite not ex- obsessive. They're very interested in the millennial stereo in the generation stereotype. I don't know. I don't know whether that's accurate mm. to your people your age. Maybe it's just because you say it a lot because <laughs> you're like you really sound like a millennial <laughs> yeah. here, or like you don't sound like a millennial here, Mum. Mm. I don't know. I mean, you don't really mention it a lot, but I feel like the 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 younger people. Are I think you know what I think. Talking about it a lot more. I think a lot of the time, uh, millennials and Gen Z and like the next generation mm-hmm. are confused because millennials yes. didn't grow up with technology. No. And ne- Gen like, Z. We had we had our first computer with internet connection. We always had a computer, but we had our first computer with internet connection when I was fifteen. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Whereas Gen Z, I feel like, is that kind of in between. Like we yeah. had phones young, but but you still know what not... a VHS is. Yeah, and then <laughs> this new generation is like they don't remember smartphones yep. not existing. They don't remember Netflix not existing. Yeah. What's the next generation? Is it just X? I think it's Gen Alpha. Oh, Al- no, well, that's Gen... That's Matilda's generation. Is yeah, Gen yeah. Alpha. Oh, I oh, know, yeah, that's what I mean. So, the is there one not below one between me. you and Matilda? No. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Oh, that's really weird. Anyway. So, my dad is Gen X. And my mum kind of is. In terms of dates, she's oh, so not, but she's Gen not a millennial. Gen X, millennials, Gen Z, Yeah, because it's X, Y, Z. Okay. Because it's oh, just it's... alphabetical. Okay. But some, like, millennials are Generation Y, oh. but they're more commonly referred to as millennials. See, see, every time I talk, I mean, I don't know many young people, but when I used to do, um, and I don't really class you as, like, a young person, because <laughs> you're 18, you're only seven years y- younger than me, but you know what I mean when I say yeah. young, young people. Um, yeah, no, I, yeah. <laughs> But like when I used to volunteer in the young women's program in church, I feel like the subject of generations came up a lot with them as well, mm. and like they knew all of the names as well. Mm-hmm. And it just it just was never in a conversation. Like it never came up in conversation when I was mm. a teenager. So that's yeah, why I, th- I thought like we could do like generation name grab <laughs> that name. That would be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, or we could do YZ or something. YZ Just or y or like Z. some name that has a Y and a Z in it, and the Y or I keep saying Z, the Y and the Z, and the Z is and the Y are both mm-hmm. capitalized. You know, like what would be the combination of our names, and then we would do like a Y and a Z in it. Uh, Lucy and Elizabeth it doesn't really go together, does it? No, it doesn't really work. Lucibeth. It just kind of sounds like a, a demon name. 
Yeah, I, I thought it sounded kind of like a like a epidemic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the new wave of Lucifer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I um I'm getting vaccinated in a couple of weeks. Oh, nice! I had my first one um, last week, a couple of weeks ago. Nice. This nice. is this is getting or oh, it could be like a COVID themed. But is that oh, inappropriate? Yeah. yeah, people have the ang- died, haven't the they? anxious. The anxious. <laughs> Just the, the, ang- the anxious. <laughs> With a Z. Yeah, the anxious. <laughs> I don't know where. The ang- the ang- the, the anxious. anxious. But that just... sounds like the anxious. That sounds like a good like uh, pop punk uh, alternative rock band. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it would be really like ironic because we do like pop punk songs but on a ukulele because that's the only <laughs> instrument either of us play <laughs> it's just it's just you playing the ukulele and me kind of screaming in, yeah. in no particular tune and then the occasional triangle school oh yeah, disco yeah, yeah. Song. <laughs> that can be the 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 weekend gig is uh, yeah yeah <laughs> all right well, there we go then. Cool. We're a pop punk child entertainer <laughs> generation and COVID themed band. Yeah. I don't think that's particularly marketable or brand. No, and it doesn't really uh... <laughs> say anything about us, does it? No. Um, um, but... but I do, that's one thing that I really appreciate about our friendship because we met when, well, when you were quite young. I mean, I was nine. So it's still quite young, but when you uh, yeah. were three. Yeah. So we didn't have like that conversation of like, what are you into? <laughs> 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 so we were just kind of like squashed together. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I, I really appreciate that we actually really don't have anything really in common. Um, no. <laughs> it makes it interesting. Yeah. Because um, you, you teach me a lot and I hope that I teach you something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. Oh, by the way, I tried um, the end of the effing world, and I didn't. I didn't enjoy oh. it. <laughs> the storyline great, the male lead great, but I hated the female lead really? with a passion. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, she just really annoyed me. But I liked the premise of he's just like How... wanting to kill her the whole time. Yeah. How far in? Did, or did you? Watch... Oh, only like two or three episodes. Okay. So maybe I need to give it a better chance. But I'm like. If I have to watch more than like five episodes, it's not worth. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm now watching. And they're only Creek. like eight episodes in one series, so like you're. Oh okay. If you're like halfway through, then it's not gonna. Well. Yeah. I mean, I the last episode like kind of blew my mind, but I mean, if you don't enjoy it this far, then. It, yeah, you know. maybe I'll give it another go. But I've started on Shit's Creek now, so um, mm-hmm. my mum loves Shit's Creek. <laughs> so I found much. out about it through a YouTube video about mm. uh, somebody. Uh, it was on Jamie Dodger's gu- uh, fiance's channel mm-hmm. about best LGBT kisses, mm. <laughs> and that was on one of them. Anyway, this is my huge this tangent. Is... Yeah, yeah, I was gonna yeah, say. We have, yeah, <laughs> it's just because I was like trying to think of of things that we have in common, uh-huh. and we do watch some of the same TV programs, but yeah. not really. But yeah, but we still have like we still find so much to talk about. Yeah, it's, ma- it's mainly Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. Speaking of Harry Potter. Yes. Elizabeth. <laughs> Thank you. I needed I needed that. How I needed long have we been talking? Away. It's been like twenty minutes. Have we? Oh yeah. I just took a screenshot accidentally. Anyway. Oh dear. It's already getting very chaotic. <laughs> okay. Oh, I feel like I've asked this before. <laughs> I feel like at least one of us says this every single yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, I'll read it out and you tell me if I've okay. asked it. Would you rather never go to the studio tour again or be able to go to the Harry Potter Orlando thing for 14 days? And you can split the days however you like. But it has it's just 14 days for the rest of your life. Have I asked would that I, before? Would I rather never, never go... be able to go to the studio tour again but be able to go to Orlando or never... Sorry, I don't oh, understand mm. yeah, the that make two any options. Sense. <laughs> 
Okay. Would, I, would you rather? Never go to the studio tour again and be able to go to, but be able to go to the Harry Potter Orlando mm -hmm. okay. section, like, you okay. know, the, the universal yeah, Harry yeah. Potter section for 14 days, a maximum. For free? Or, <laughs> for, yeah, like both, both options. Or, let's say, um, go to the studio tour, but never, ever be allowed mm -hmm. to go to the Universal uh, land and you only get to do the studio tour for 14 days. So it's like, we usually go a day a year. Mm -hmm. So let's say like 14 years <laughs> and then we're done. Uh, okay. <laughs> or, so does that make sense? <laughs> wait, do I have to pay to go to Universal Studios? So let's say both all of this is free. Free. Yeah, it's like an all expensive and... paid like, um, like Potter Watch is super popular, and we've been yeah, given... we've been sponsored. <laughs> yeah, by, yeah. <laughs> okay, for fourteen years. <laughs> no, so that's the studio tour. Okay. Orlando is oh. for so it's just days. It's just days. Wait, so you can Orlando, go to the studio tour. Orlando, they're both free. Yeah, they're both free. I so will it, go. So you go Orlando for fourteen tour. days, but not able to go yeah, studio yeah. tour or studio tour. Definitely, days. definitely studio tour. Yeah, definitely. I uh, the idea of, well, okay, no. Would I be able to go to the other parts of nope. Universal Studios, just not the Harry Potter section or the whole of Universal Studios? No, it's just the Harry Potter section. No, no. But you... what what I mean is, if I pick oh. the option where I can only go to the studio tour, mm -hmm. would I be able to then, on a completely separate occasion, pay for myself to go to Universal Studios, but I would just have to ignore the Harry Potter yeah, section? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Harry Potter That's section allowed. does not exist for you. But you can okay, go to that's other fine, parts. That's fine. Yeah. yeah, I'd definitely pick um, studio tour. I'm I'm very I'm very at odds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have no idea what I would pick because I just really like the idea of going on the train from mm. uh, Hogsmeade Station to Diagon Alley right. and like going to the different places yeah. and going to the shops. Yeah. But I feel like when it's all like done and dusted and it's all blown over and uh, you know done everything and mm -hmm. the fourteen days are up, I I will be like like regretting it a lot mm. because it's mm. like you know I would probably do like I'd go for what would that be five days then another five days and then four days so like one year five days and then wait like a few years and then right. when i'm really desperate to go again do five days another year yeah um and then round it round up the 14 days with a four day yeah. at the end or something but then like it's like i'd be so like stressed out about having a good time that i feel like mm -hmm. i wouldn't have a good time mm -hmm. <laughs> um and like seeing everything and being like this is my last harry potter chance of doing anything mm. harry potter so yeah i think i actually would agree with you and go to the studio tour for a maximum of 14 days instead yeah that's like 14 years i will be how old am i 25 so 10 years is 35 39 no mm. yeah 39 i would so, if I, I would probably alternate years though or maybe yeah like, yeah. later on go like only once every three or four years yep. um, yeah because but... i doubt i doubt we'll we'll carry on going every year for the rest of time yeah <laughs> yeah i mean although i would love that to happen but yeah you know. <laughs> yeah i would love to be like an old lady just like wonder also i feel like as much as i would i would love to go to universal in general mm -hmm. for especially for the rides actually I'm really and obviously not for... about the rides. Right, right. And I, the other bit, I don't really care about the other bit. <laughs> I, I really, really want... Like, I, I, I feel like as well, I would still be really excited to go to Universal mm -hmm. if the Harry Potter bit wasn't there. Right. But I think that um, the studio tour weirdly, like, holds... Even though it's really cool to, like, go around, it's really interesting... It also holds like more emotional significance yes. than just being the Harry Potter studio tour. Like it's my happy place. Yeah, like and because we've been there so many times. Yeah, and... my favorite place on earth. Yeah. <laughs> J Japan is a close, 
mm. close second. Mm. <laughs> but it's still second. <laughs> the, the model room, the, the Hogwarts room at the end of Harry yeah. Potter Studio Tour is like genuinely when people are like, imagine yourself somewhere where you feel happy. Like I immediately, mm. I think of that room at the mm. studio tour because every time I'm in that room, I just feel so overwhelmed with that happiness yeah. and peace. Yeah, <laughs> like, like I, just... I remember saying to Roman, like, oh, you know, I don't think we'll be able to, or saying to my mum or something, I can't remember, but I was, I was trying to compartmentalise not being able to go in the car with you guys this year. Mm-hmm. And Roman's like, how important is it that you go in the car? And I was like, it's like 50% of the fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like on the way there, seeing the this the tour, like yeah. seeing the the, and, it, the and, lots and be like, oh, yeah. I can see it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and then like on the way back, like sharing snacks Google and snacks. stories and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like that's like half of the fun for me. Yeah. Uh, and and the whole day, like it's just there's no stress there's no like mm-hmm. we've got the whole day mm-hmm. just for harry potter yeah just for harry potter whereas i feel like the the universal one as i say would be quite stressful like i remember mm. when me and Rowan went to disneyland and it was amazing but it was like right we need to get here and we need to get there and we need to like make sure we get all of the rides in and make sure yeah. we get the, all of this done so we can make sure we've we've done everything blah 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 mm-hmm. and it, although it was so fun it was it was very stressful yeah whereas studio tour we've been so many times that i'm not like yeah. so so worried about like i'm like okay i'll see the new section i'm i'm concerned yeah. about seeing everything in the new section but it's like oh yeah you know there's the, <laughs> yeah. there's the old hagrid's hat <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <You know? laughs> mm. yeah so yeah i think i agree i do studio tour and nice. i apologize if we have had that once before <laughs> i that i don't remember okay that question so maybe i discussed it with roman maybe i was yeah, like maybe Roman, I don't know the answer to this to my own question. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm. All right. So um, I guess we will head on in to our episode today with some uh, writing on the wall stuff. Writing <laughs> 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 on nice. the wall. Um. <laughs> Oh, I've maybe I should say maybe I should add this to my non Harry Potter question instead of asking okay. right now because we've already been talking for um, <laughs> <laughs> further. Um, okay, maybe I'll ask it next so it's still kind of relevant. Okay. Anyway. Okie dokie. So let's dive right into what goes down after Mrs. Norris is discovered by everyone. So there is a small change in the way that Filch discovers Mrs. Norris from the book to the film. In the film, it's Harry Filch notices first, but in the book, it's Mrs. Norris that he sees. But in both, he's very quick to blame Harry and threaten his life. Um, which, <laughs> I mean, like, listen, I know a few cat owners and I don't <laughs> yeah. think that's too, uh, you know, out, you know, out of uh, the realms of possibility. Mm-hmm. Um I like that, are. that he sees Mrs. Norris first in the book. I think that should have been... like. Yeah. I feel like Filch, Filch and Mrs. Norris is... We don't get the, uh, the I don't know, the whole extent of the relationship mm. in the films. Yeah. I mean, you know my that... favourite bit, I think, in like gob- the whole of Goblet of Fire is Filch like, mm-hmm. dancing with Mrs. <laughs> yeah. Norris. <laughs> yeah. You know that theory that she's a... Um... What's the thing in Fantastic Beasts oh, where you turn into oh, a... Oh, uh, Maledictus. Yeah. I, yeah. First of all, I hate that theory. It was his wife. Yeah. I hate that theory. I, I love the fact that... Well, I like that theory because I like people acknowledging how much he loves Mrs. Norris. Yes. But I, just, I love the fact that he's so obsessed with his lovely little old pet cat. Yeah. Yeah. It just makes me so happy. Yeah. I'm like... I, um, I, I agree. I, I kind of like the theory, but I like it more that he just he just he's a really good cat owner and that's basically yeah. the only thing he is good at <laughs> <laughs> but also like she's his only friend like his yeah. only companion yeah he's like mrs norris we'll be squibs together <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah um it would i feel like it would kind of defeat the purpose if she had been a witch or if she was some kind of magical 
mm-hmm. thing, you know? Because mm-hmm. well, anyway, yeah, I just I love how obsessed Fulch is with with Mrs. Norris. Yeah. Um, yeah. So one redeemable feature yeah. <laughs> is one yeah. redeemable feature. Yeah. And then Dumbledore arrives. And in the film, he sends everyone away to their dormitories and says the brilliant line, everyone except you three. <laughs> and they then proceed, <laughs> they proceed to have what should be a private conversation right in the middle of the hallway. <laughs> um, as you do. I mean... Yeah. It never I, really listen. struck me as odd before, but when I like mm. compared it directly to the book and the film, I'm like wow that is really awful like the yeah. students like they're just expecting the students to be good and go away like yeah. what if a student just just stayed <laughs> yeah yeah it's i feel like, like there is a lot of issues with people having very private conversations <laughs> yeah. just in the middle of the hallways of hogwarts yeah it's throughout the series yeah i guess though it, it would be like a weird segue yeah. well yeah this is the thing in the in the films it's it would be a waste of time for them mm-hmm. to move to a different mm-hmm. location, establish this new setting, mm-hmm. and you know have shots of Harry like looking around at this new place. He's yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. It you know it makes sense just to continue the dialogue, but it doesn't make sense in the context of yeah. the actual universe, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, we say that a lot with kind of small things like the... this explanation yeah <laughs> yeah it's just quicker <laughs> yeah <laughs> in the book he unites mrs norris and unites <laughs> you know he mean, she's, she's cut in half so <laughs> i was thinking like he unites the i don't know oh um, mrs norris with, with filch <laughs> I, I guess so um he unties mrs norris straight away and then they go into Gildroy's office, which just happens to be the closest to have uh, a conversation. I just want to point out that I love how Gilderoy is like, oh, Professor, my my office is nearest. And it's like, mm. this is this is Dumbledore. Like, he's yeah. been in this castle for like, <laughs> what, 200 years now? Mm. He, I think he knows that the defence against the dark arts teacher is yeah. near. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. So, of course, uh, in the films, we don't see everything that goes on inside the classroom because it's happening outside. Um, And it says in the book that Harry saw several of the Lockhart's in the pictures dodging out of sight, their hair in rollers. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I think that's a very funny little... Yeah. I love... One of the things that I I think is really missed from the films is besides... This is the reason that I love that scene in... Um, hang on, let me finish my th- thought first. The, one of the things that I think is missed a lot from the films is the kind of quirkiness and the comedy and yeah. character of the portraits, which is why I really love that scene in, in Prisoner of Azkaban where you have all the students running around the staircases following the fat lady with yes. with all the other characters in the back, you know, portraits the in the animals, background running around. Yeah, the exactly. Giraffe I, going through several portraits. Yeah, and you see, uh, like, Sir Cadogan, and I think they, there was some, I mean, we'll get onto that when we do yeah. Prisoner of Azkaban, but I really I like the, the moments in the book where you have the characters on in the portraits acting mm-hmm. in character. Yeah. I, I also love this about Lockhart that, like, I feel like he has a lot of like negative points, but mm-hmm. he's definitely not toxically masculine, which is great. I love, no. <laughs> I love that he like wears his hair in rollers, and he's not ashamed to like wear very extravagant clothing. Mm-hmm. I j- yeah, I love it. You don't mm-hmm. see that a lot in like books that are. I mean, Harry Potter is is not a not a um, modern book, mm. so you know. I'm like, yeah, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I d- yeah, I suppose it's the downside of that, though, is that's kind of where the comedy of his character comes from. I guess so. So it's like, it's yeah. kind of like, oh, great, you know. Like, he's not toxically masculine, but he's... But he's that's used for the butt of the joke. Yeah, I guess time. so. Yeah. But, I mean, we, we can... Listen, Gildroy <laughs> is... He is the icon of, yes. of the Harry Potter series. He yeah. listen. He published the Harry Potter books. Yeah. Um. In you know, in his name, Hermione Granger obviously wrote them. Um, yeah. And uh, and then he, and he stole plagiarized. In J.K. Rowling's yeah. name. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. So that so that the uh, the, the authorities wouldn't catch on. 
Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, we really have Lockhart to thank for all of this. Yeah, this is why he's the best character. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I suppose in that sense, then, he he's just showing his pride that he wears his, his uh, yeah. hair and rollers, you know? Yeah. And that it really, he's very self-aware. Very mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or he didn't proofread it and Hermione just is exposing all his yeah. Um, yeah. really... <laughs> Yeah. If anyone um, doesn't know what we're talking about, oh, yeah. please watch a very Potter senior year. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. You will not regret it. Oh, yeah, highly recommend Very Potter musical trilogy. Yes. And I mean, uh, essentially in within that universe Hermione writes Harry Potter. So, yeah. Um I mean, and and a Very Potter musical is canon uh just in general. So, yep. you know, <laughs> It, that's that's how it happened yeah. um so <laughs> in the film i take um, it as canon i'm like that's more canon than the films <laughs> exactly more canon than cursed child yeah oh yeah definitely. similar Easy. weirdly similar themes similarly plot similar yes. plot lines <laughs> i feel like um, they kind of predicted all this. <laughs> yeah funny as well because a very Potter musical is a, a parody like it's a joke yeah and then cursed child was weirdly similar and was serious. Trying to be serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keyword trying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So in the film, Dumbledore can tell with only a short glance that Mrs. Norris isn't dead, but just petrified. In the book, however, he has to look very closely. He prods and pokes her and taps her with his wand, muttering strange words before he's confident to say that she has been petrified. So as you know, this is another one of those things that makes no sense in the film. Yeah. Um, but it's just it saves thirty seconds or yeah. so of nothing, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I th- it probably adds to Dumbledore like, wow, he's so knowledgeable. Yeah. But yeah. to me, I don't know why, but um, the thing that he does in the book of like really examining her, I mm-hmm. don't know why, but that comes across as more intelligent to me. Yeah, and also a slightly more sensitive yes. and like aware of Filch's, you know, that that he's he like, would I'll make just sure leave he her was. There. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave him there. It's like Sprout, very yeah. Sprout vibes. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the the fact that he would just be like, oh, I assume she's probably been petrified, and then tell Filch, who is obviously very disturbed by what's going on. Mm-hmm. Although I suppose it's better she to be down, like, dude. oh, don't worry, she's not dead. Yeah. Quicker, but still, I don't know. It's better to be sure, yeah. in, in most cases. Yeah. And then while he's doing this investigation, Gildroy is starting his usual nonsense about he how he you know is the best person ever <laughs> and could have saved her if he was there. So <clears throat> he says, it was definitely a curse that killed her. Probably the transmog- transmogryphian <laughs> torture. Mm-hmm. I've seen it used many times. So unlucky I wasn't there. I know the very counter curse that could have saved her. I remember seeing something very similar happening in Ooh Wagadugu. Ooh, say that again. Wagadugu. Or it, sometimes it's pronounced Oogadugu, but I think it's properly Wag- pronounced Wagadugu. Wagadugu. I'm pretty sure that in that country they um happiness is the currency. I I I, pr- I remember like learning like, this in geography, and like when they when they need something, they do the other person like a favor that that would make them happy. Oh yeah, that's so. That's... I'm not sure whether that's still true, but that was true yeah. 15 years ago when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Uagadugu. Anyway, carry on. Yeah. Um, something very similar happening in Uagadugu, <laughs> said Lockhart. A series of attacks. The full story is in my autobiography. I was able to provide the townsfolk with various amulets, which cleared the matter up at once. <laughs> yeah, and of course, there's one of these lines that is directly taken straight to the films, which is, so unlucky I wasn't there. I know exactly the counter curse that could have spared her. Um, so. Sorry, I'm just laughing because I watch, I literally watched this today. And like mm-hmm. Dumbledore does like the... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the, looking over the, his glasses like mm-hmm. dude i know <laughs> i know everything about you <laughs> yeah yeah sorry i, I, I just kind of to... took one of your no no that's life. okay i feel like i feel like i had something to say but i don't think i do okay <laughs> anyway 
Um, oh, no, what I had to say is also the way that Kenneth, Tana, uh, Kenneth Branagh delivers the line um, yes. in the film when he kind of looks around at everyone afterwards as if, yeah, like, like, kind of self-aware that they... Well, but it's also kind of like, oh, I'm pr- pretty sure that they know I'm lying, but, like, yeah. don't... He's like, oh, like, go, go along with it, guys. Like, yeah, <laughs> don't acknowledge... Um, yeah, I, I think it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think it's really great. Yeah, I do really like um, the delivery of that line mm, in particular. Mm-hmm. Also, it's worth pointing out that in the book, Filch is really he's really going through it as yeah. as we said. He obviously really cares about his cat. He's really heavily crying, and in the films, he's just kind of angry. Yeah, um, I'm just going to read a little bit from mm. the book that talks about him crying. Mm-hmm. Um, it says. Lockhart's comments were punctuated by Filcher's dry, wrecking sobs. He was slumped in a chair by the desk, unable to look at Mrs Norris, his face in his hands. Much as he detested Filch, Harry couldn't help feeling a little bit sorry for him. I, yeah, yeah, I really like that there's a little bit of kind of sympathy for Filch in the book, which obviously yeah. in the film, they want to create very, especially for the side characters, they want them yeah. to be very Black basic. And white. Um, Filch but, bad. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I I really like that there's that bit of kind of a sympathy and... Yeah, um, uh, it's yeah. one thing that I appreciate about a lot of Harry Potter characters is that they all have, well, not not so much some of the students, but uh-huh. usually they have like a good bit of backstory. Like, like mm. Newt Scamander <laughs> has his own film <laughs> series and he was mm. one author of one random yeah. book. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like mentioned twice in the whole yeah. seven se- seven part series. So yeah, that's that's one thing I appreciate in general. Mm. So then in the book, all is revealed as to why Filch is so convinced that Harry is the one who petrified Mrs. Norris. It says, "He did it. He did it." Filch spat, his pouchy face purpling. You saw what he wrote on the wall. He found in my office. He knows I'm a... I'm a... Filch's face worked horribly. He knows I'm a squib, he finished. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I feel kind of sorry for him. Yeah. Somebody's found out my my terrible secret that everyone probably yeah. already knows. <laughs> yeah. And especially all of the teachers. But now he's like, yeah. oh no, now the students know and it's going to get out. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Although... I feel like Harry the trio didn't... keep it. Keep yeah, it quiet. They're not mean about it. No. Well, I don't know. I feel like Ron might have <laughs> like <laughs> told told his brothers. Probably. <laughs> yeah, and then Snape's lines are pretty much word for word. Um, he's wondering where Harry and Hermione were and why they weren't at dinner. Then, in the film, Gildroy provides Harry's alibi with a detention, and Hermione says that they went looking for him. And then, obviously, in the book. They just explained that they were at the death day party. Mm-hmm. And then Snape asks them why they didn't go to the feast afterwards. And it, it, it says, <laughs> <laughs> We weren't hungry, said Ron loudly, as his stomach gave a huge rumble. <laughs> Snape's nasty smile widened. I suggest, Headmaster, that Potter is not being entirely truthful, he said. It might be a good idea if he were deprived of certain privileges until he is ready to tell us the whole story. I personally feel he should be taken off the Gryffindor Quidditch team until he is ready to be honest. <laughs> and then Professor McGonagall's reply to Snape is amazing as always. She says, really Severus, I see no reason to stop the boy playing Quidditch. This cat wasn't hit over the head with a broomstick. <laughs> I love that I love their like Quidditch rival. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you yeah. dare take my star seeker. <laughs> yeah. Again, like not caring about like actual like Harry's like school life or anything. Yeah. It's just like and also, Don't, the, he's my star seeker. Yeah. The fact that this is a very serious, very serious situation and Snape's mm-hmm. like, maybe we should kick him off the Quidditch team. <laughs> yeah. And McGonagall's like, mm, Stop's nope. like uh, Snape. This isn't the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you this, can hate James the caretaker, on your own like, time. Yeah, the caretaker is just sobbing in the ca- in the corner and he's <laughs> yeah. just trying to um, seek revenge. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that would be a good like parody TikTok. 
<laughs> Dumbledore yeah. being like, Snape, spirit, yeah, Snape. dude, uh, read the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then in the film, when Harry says that he wasn't hungry, Dumbledore says, innocent until proven guilty, Severus, straight away. Whereas in the book, Dumbledore gives Harry a searching look that Harry says feels, well, the book says Harry feels as though he was being x-rayed, mm. um, which we can now assume was legitimacy. And then he says that they are innocent until proven guilty. Do you think that's um, an invasion of privacy? Yeah, <laughs> but it's Dumbledore. He Just doesn't seem too bothered with yeah. that, with that um, idea, that concept. Yeah, like, oh, it's just mind reading. Like, yeah, like I'm not, I'm not I'm a delving wizard. too deep. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. can't be bothered to question him more. Give me yeah. a break. I'm I mean, a busy I suppose, man. Yeah. Also, the fact that he was like, hmm. Is this twelve-year-old the, the like what? <laughs> He's actually considering that yeah. he could be lying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we say this. He might have just been looking at him. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, we're yeah, assuming. it could. It might just not be legitimacy. And yeah. Dumbledore. It reminds me of that bit. Character. It reminds. Anyway. Yeah, it reminds me of that bit where he's like, "Do you have anything to tell me?" And he's like, "No, sir." Nothing. Yeah. And then he kind of looks down at him He's like a bit suspicious. <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah, that's, yeah. That's what it reminds me of. And then Dumbledore... I feel like I keep saying and then. I need, <laughs> I need to, to mix it up a bit. Dumbledore <laughs> then explains <laughs> that they moving are growing... Moving swiftly forward. <laughs> moving swiftly forward. As the plot develops <laughs> as, yeah. can do, as the plot thickens uh. okay well <laughs> then Dumbledore <laughs> explains that they're growing mandrakes which will be ready to make a potion within no time in the book Gildroy volunteers himself for making a potion he says I'll make it look hard to butted in I must have done it a hundred times I could whip up a mandrake restorative draft in my sleep excuse me said Snape icily but I believe I am the potions master of the school. There was a very awkward pause. <laughs> yeah. You know, for the longest time, I always read draft as draught. Mm. And I really did not know that it was draft until I, I was read like, it as, maybe as drought. 17. <laughs> drought of living death. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, drought. I read it like, like a drought, like no, no water. water yeah yeah which is like the opposite <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah sorry that was a bit of a random uh, well no i i i also did that they don't do that in the films there we go booked film hey. difference. <laughs> <laughs> um, then when they are going back to their dormitory they harry and hermione talk about the strange voice that only harry could hear in the film, Hermione once again steals Ron's line from the book um, about how even in the wizarding world, hearing voices isn't a good sign. Um, <laughs> I like see... your facial expression was like <laughs> dead on. <laughs> even in the wizarding Thanks. world. <laughs> she does yeah. that like shake. <laughs> see, this is the thing. On one hand, it's like this makes more sense coming from Ron because mm -hmm. he's grown up in the wizarding world. And it's another one of those cases of of making Hermione seem like the smart one, but also the way Emma Watson delivers this yeah. line is just incredible. Like, one of my favourite lines of the whole movie series, because yeah. it's just so like, And I do like quotable. Ron saying, are you mad? Yeah, um, <laughs> that's true. Because Harry's like, oh, should I have told them about the voice? And he's like, are you mad? Yeah. And like, it, they, I agree, they both, both of the lines fit both of the yeah. film characters, because they're both yes. so far into the... I don't know. They're so put into one st uh, mm -hmm. characteristic, right? That they they both need to have those lines for themselves. Yeah, yeah. In order for it to make sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, also in the book, Ron explains what a squib is, which we haven't heard before. It says, "And what on earth is a squib?" Said. Oh, is that with really weird? Like, <laughs> you said that really. <laughs> I can listen to that after we finish yeah. because that was Definitely. true. I said that like while while breathing in. <laughs> it sounded like Harry was like, 
accusing Ron of something. <laughs> <laughs> and what on earth is a scream? <laughs> oh, I was actually crying a lot of it. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> actually, when we finish, I actually hang on. Let me make a note of the time because I actually need to. <laughs> it's eight fifty-two. Oh. Oh, eight forty-two is okay. the time. <laughs> yeah. What? What? <laughs> I meant. I meant how long we've been recording, so I could go back and listen to it. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> let me just do that again. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let me calm and then no one ever needs to know that that happened. <laughs> Although, I will definitely be putting that in the story. <laughs> I'm never going to let you live that down. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, deep breaths. Okay. <laughs> what on earth is a squib? said Harry. To his surprise, Ron stifled a snigger. Well, it's not funny, really, but as it's filch, he said. A squib is someone who was born into a wizarding family but hasn't got any magic powers. Kind of the opposite of muggle-born wizards. But squibs are quite pa- quite quite powerful. <laughs> <laughs> but squibs... I don't know where that came from. But squ- <laughs> okay. They're mysterious. But squibs- but they, they're actually Jedis. So, yeah. Because we don't yeah. believe in they're that. They're not wizards. They're really yes, shunned. Exactly. In that Different society. universe. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But squibs are quite unusual. If Filch is trying to learn magic from a quick spell course, I reckon it must be a, I reckon he must be a squib. It would explain a lot, like why he hates students so much. Ron gave a satisfied smile. He's bitter. I don't know um, why he bothers to say I reckon he must be a squib because it's like wh- why would he say it if he wasn't? <laughs> yeah like, like it's not like he's saying oh, that's true. oh yeah i'm um i'm really handsome like mm. he's saying something that he's he's somewhat ashamed of even though he shouldn't be right. but he is ashamed of it yeah so like why would it why would <laughs> he lie even about noticed that? that before that one's like you know what i have a funny really feeling must be. Be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like Phil <laughs> literally said I'm a mm. squid. Mm. <laughs> it's like someone mm. coming out as gay, and then they're saying, "You know, you know what? what? I think I, I might think be gay. <laughs> not not straight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if I saw him in a relationship with another man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah." Oh, I have a fun fact about s- mm-hmm. the word. I purposely, I, I saw this and I purposely haven't read it, so. Okay, cool. Um. Well, I, because I spelt squib without a U by accident, it was just a typo it, while I was writing the script for this, and my computer corrected it into squib. Oh. And I was quite surprised, so I looked up squib in on Google, and it's mm-hmm. an actual word that has two meanings. The first meaning is a small firework that burns with a hissing sound before exploding, which is really (laughs) oddly specific, (laughs) and a short short piece of satirical writing, or like, you know, sarcastic writing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, (laughs) apparently squib is an actual thing. Mm -hmm. I don't don't know whether J.K. Rowling knew about that and used it anyway yeah. or just didn't know because i i've never ever heard anyone say squib out of the context of harry potter no. before no yeah huh like oh I that, that say fireworks it, it right meant... squib that one <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> i thought you were gonna say it, it meant something kind of like on the same sort of in the same vein as yeah like oh it, it's a squib it, it was a slur at one point yeah of... like it, it, idiots or something like outcast or yeah like, yeah not that squibs are idiots they're just non-magic but yeah yeah i i thought so too hmm. it's two very different things yeah <laughs> <sighs> weird do you think fred and george sell fireworks called squibs just for the lols <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> with, with the explode in the face of like in the shape of filch's face yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess it's my turn now. Mm-hmm. Woohoo! Everybody cheer! It's Melissa's turn. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Who's your favourite, Lucy or Elizabeth? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> we'll put a poll in, in the description. Pardon? <laughs> we'll put a poll in the description. Yeah. <laughs> you can vote. 
<laughs> yeah. It's just it's just one vote for each, and it's just us voting for ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would vote for you. You're my favourite. Oh. So it'd be two cool. votes for these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that means I win. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Um, so after this, in the book, Filch becomes a little bit obsessed about the attack and can be, well, understandably. Um, mm. I wonder if he has like kind of PTSD about the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably like his best would. friend is stupefied. Mm. So he can be seen regularly in the corridor with the writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. He also tries to clean off the writing with, quote, Mrs. Scour's all-purpose magical mess remover, which I love. Mm. <laughs> I love those little bits, like, you know, in one of the my favourite bits. Brands. Yeah, one of my favourite mm. bits in Goblet of Fire is, like, when they write all of the adverts on the, yeah. on the magic board. Yeah. yeah, like the Quidditch World Cup. Yeah, the Quidditch World Cup, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't do anything because the writing is magically, like, stuck on there, um, mm -hmm. which I have questions about. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. uh, who was Ginny there, like, abracadabra? Like... <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> is Tom able, because he's only giving her instructions, mm. so, but she's not, she's 11. <laughs> mm. <laughs> So it's weird. Anyway, yeah. when Filch isn't in that corridor, he can be seen trying to put students in detentions for things like breathing loudly and looking happy, <laughs> <laughs> which is just a mood that I think mm. we can all relate to sometimes. Mm. <laughs> it's also noted in the books, but I, I can't remember and I can't find it. I, I tried to find a clip. I've tried to look, watch the film. And I couldn't find anything. Um, any evidence of this in the film um that Ginny seems to be very disturbed by the attack as well mm. I, I can't remember but I think I'm like just putting the memory in my head of um Ron talking about oh Ginny seems really upset in the film I, mm. but I don't think that actually happens I don't think they mention it at all in the film uh no I see I yeah I I think that is just a book thing I, I yeah. also that feels like something that I have watched, but that probably just because I watched yeah. it in my head when yeah. I was when I was reading the book. Yeah, I've tried to like find it. There is that bit I can't where find anything like that in the film where they're talking about the Chamber of Secrets at some point, and Ginny. I think it's when McGonagall goes up to the. Yeah, Ginny's she, like. Oh god. She looks a bit like yeah. freaked out, but yeah. you assume That's it's just because, it. like the you know, <laughs> like. Because everyone's freaked out. Yeah. Well, in the book, she understandably goes pale when Ron assures her that they'll, quote, catch the nutter who did did it and have him out of here in no time. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> Although I'm not sure whether she actually knows that it's her, that, but I think she suspects that it's her. Mm. She's not stupid. Yeah, because she's, like, been, like, Losing her out memory, and stuff. yeah. 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 And I think she said, uh, spoilers, I think she said that she, in the, like, at the end of the book, when she's explaining everything, she found, like, blood on her fingers or something. Yeah. yeah. So she probably knows. You know what I love? That bit in the fifth book. Yes. Fifth book? When, when, when she gets annoyed at Harry. When oh. she's like, I'm, you know, uh, why wouldn't you talk to me? Like, I'm the only one, you know, who... I yeah. think it's the sixth one. Like, I'm the only one you yeah, know who when has been possessed by Voldemort. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree. I'm like, why wasn't that in the films? It's like one of her only like massive roles in the in yeah, the Yeah, like you forget how much, like, I feel like they just kind of move on from the fact that this 11 year old girl was possessed yeah. by the most evil wizard of all time yeah. for a year. Yeah, for the majority <laughs> of the year. Yeah. Yeah. It's anyway. quite crazy. Mm. And manages to be sane enough to try and get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. Harry in the book catches sight of Justin Finch Fletchley on his way down to the library one day and he goes to say hello to him but Justin just kind of speeds off in the other direction <laughs> and there is a scene like kind See, of in my mind I know he just kind of like quickly walks in my mind he just like zooms you know <laughs> like the um, yeah or like when you see those like behind the scenes of Twilight where they're like running yeah. on treadmills and then the treadmill is moving and there's like, <laughs> like yeah. 
that's what happens in my mind when Harry so fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I I completely yeah, <laughs> I imagine that as well. <laughs> mm. uh, there is kind of a scene like this in the film. Um like in the books it's like, oh Harry Harry is the heir of Slytherin and it's like a big thing, but in the film there's just like a kind of one scene when they're all doing homework and he's like looking mm. around at everyone and everyone just kind of ignores him and mm-hmm. he's like and that's meant to be like, oh really sad, but it annoys mm. me because it's like they're they're trying to do their homework. <laughs> <Larry>. <laughs> Like Hermione yeah. also does it. Like she gives him that weird look. Do you remember? Yeah. That? She's like they're like half smile. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess it's like they're staring at him and then they like look away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when he notices. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Smile at him and like a bit of an eye roll. <laughs> yeah. She does like a bit. Of, yeah. And it's like you're his best friend. But he doesn't <laughs> yeah. need that from you. He's really going through it. Like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. I feel like. It's very this this whole like air of Slytherin thing is quite downplayed mm-hmm. in the book uh, in the film sorry compared to the book <laughs> yeah so so yeah that that happens here in the book um, that Justin Flint, Finch Fletchley just kind of ignores him and goes off um, and it kind of happens in the film but not really mm-hmm. when Harry goes into the library um, Hermione has been looking for Hogwarts history as she couldn't fit it into her trunk because of all of the Gilderoy Lockhart books that they had to print. <laughs> but all of the Hogwarts History editions have all been taken out. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? Um, Hermione immediately explains, so we don't have to wonder for long, um, <laughs> <laughs> that there's actually a little thing about the Chamber of Secrets in there. There's a little story, um, but she can't quite remember, which is weird because it's Hermione and she remembers mm. everything that she's read. Mm. Maybe it's one of those things that she read and then kind of She's disregarded like, oh, as legend, so didn't fiction. bother, yeah, like remembering it. I can see that. Yeah, actually, that's that's a good point. And then we get to hear about the Chamber of Secrets from a professor. In the film, mm-hmm. it's McGonagall, but in the book, it's Professor Binns, since he's mm-hmm. the history of magic teacher. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes yep. much more sense to be asking the history of magic teacher than the transfiguration <laughs> teacher. Yeah, this bit. Like, I suppose she's just also the deputy. Yeah. Head. So before I read the books and like thought that this was strange, I always just assumed that it was like, well, it, this is probably the first lesson after that attack, right? And yeah. they're just like really shook up about it. And McGonagall, as a understanding teacher, it's like, mm-hmm. okay, you need to know. But yeah, it does make obviously more sense asking Professor Bins, but we you don't mm-hmm. have Professor Bins in the films. No. The ghost, ghosting of the ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ghost I erasure. Love Professor Bins. I really wish he was in the films. Yeah, same. Although the problem is, uh, not the problem, but when I was younger and I read the books, for some reason I imagined all the ghosts as obviously just like humans who were like yeah. kind of like transparent Ooh. basically. But for yeah. some reason I imagined Professor Bins as like a cartoon ghost. <laughs> yeah, like cat. I think it's because it's like he comes through the blackboard every at the start of every lesson mm. and that's kind of like Casper when he goes through the blackboard in the school in that one film it's a really weird right. memory that I have um, <laughs> a very niche memory that I have yeah yeah, yeah see I, I in my mind he, it's like a sheet with the two black eyes oh really oh, yeah that like kind very of oh, okay. very cartoon ghost <laughs> I, I just for some reason when I read it and it was like they have a ghost for a teacher I was like okay got it Got it. <laughs> like, I know what a ghost looks holes. like. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I find it really difficult to not imagine him as like a slightly grumpy looking, <laughs> like cartoon ghost. <laughs> oh, I love that. So I kind of I find it quite funny, and so kind of for that reason, I'm glad they didn't do him in the films because I would find it a lot easier to get that <laughs> image out of my head. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, I, I remember seeing it, one of the um, Pottermore illustrations of Professor Bins, and I was mm. like, why does he look like a normal person? He's supposed <laughs> to be a ghost. <laughs> yeah. This is what ghosts look like, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we all know. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. All right. So in the book, um, Hermione interrupts Bins' lesson, and with uncharacteristic observational skills, Harry notices that Bins is very surprised. 
as though no student alive or dead had ever interrupted him before which is probably true because they're all sleeping mm. Mm. <laughs> lessons are so boring so Binns didn't really want to say anything about the chamber as he believes that it's a myth and pr he prefers to stick to the facts um, I mean same um but he sees that every student is now staring at him with like rapt attention which isn't something mm. that like ever happens in his lessons so he's like okay <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put on a show for you <laughs> obviously as we know in the film hermione interrupts mcgonagall who goes on to explain what the legend behind the chamber is very willingly like there's no like with Professor bins he's like no i'm not going to tell you let's carry on and mm. there's kind of a um, dispute exchange kind of thing against Hermione mm -hmm. and Binns but yeah McGonagall is very willing mm. so we all know the story behind Chamber of Secrets so I won't bore you all with that <laughs> you all <laughs> as if we have like more listeners than our mums um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mum you know you know the story yeah. of Chamber of Secrets don't worry <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I would just like to read this last bit from Professor Binns I just kind of, I just, I really like, you don't really hear much from Professor Binns, so mm. I kind of like this little insight into his character. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and by the way, I also like that he keeps on saying the wrong names because he never, like, does, like, question and answer in his classes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he calls, um, hang on, let me see if I can find them all, Seamus Finnegan O'Flaherty. <laughs> I, I like to assume that... Well, I mean, I think this is what it is. It's like, mm. they're the pupils who sat there a few... Yes, when um, he was actually alive. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just, like, gotten used to... Like, he just... Yeah. Yeah. He's just old. Because mm -hmm. he, I'm assuming, he died of old age because he didn't even realise he was dead. Yeah. Yeah, he calls, yeah just died in his sleep. Yeah. He calls uh, Parvati Patil Miss Pennyfeather... Oh yes, uh, he calls Hermione Miss Grant. Mm. Although he does call her Miss Granger at first, because he asks Miss Er, uh, and Hermione says Granger right. Professor, but then he just immediately okay. forgets and calls her Miss Grant. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'll I'll read his like the ending mm -hmm. of his little uh, myth Chamber of Secrets lesson now. Um, that will do, he said sharply. It is a myth. It does not exist. There is not a shred of evidence that Slytherin ever built so much as a secret broom cupboard. I regret telling you such a foolish story. We will return, if you please, to history, to solid, believable, verifiable fact. And within five minutes, the class had sunk back into its usual torpor. <laughs> Mythbusters with Professor Bins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, and then, like the first one is, do ghosts exist? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm sick of this ghost erasure. <laughs> no, we are imagine, real. Imagine him though, like very passionately arguing that, that ghosts are, are are a myth and there's no scientific evidence. And, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd love to see that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we will be moving on to our Marauder's Map section. Thank you. Let's have a little wonder. So, uh, as I keep saying, a lot of this stuff has been covered already. We just need to move on to Prisoner of Azkaban. Yeah, it's <laughs> getting boring. Um, <laughs> so, the location for the Transfiguration classroom where they're told about the Chamber of Secrets is the Chapped House at Durham mm. Cathedral, which is just off the Cloisters. And the cathedral was founded in 1093, but the chapped house was built between 1133 and oh. 1140. Hmm. Um, so it was a, a more, I mean, not recent, but more recent <laughs> <laughs> addition to the cathedral. Oh. Um, Can I just say, yeah. I love the um, set dressing with the, with the board, the drawing yes. on the board for the yeah. transfiguring the animal into the cup. Yes, it's really cool. Is beautiful i generally really um, like the transfiguration classroom set dressing with all of the yeah dream yeah diagrams. it's really cool I, I really like um the 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 dressing of the classrooms but particularly how the i mean you only really see the defense against the dark arts classroom and the 
transfiguration classroom, but even between teachers of the Defense Against mm-hmm. the Dark class- classroom, which I you will probably potions. cover. I, oh yeah, no, of course, potions. Like how they're all distinguished. It's very, very yes. separate aesthetics in yeah. a sense, like based yeah. on the subject. That was one of my favorite bits about the books was like every Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, you get to see like a different kind of office because Harry is always right. very close to them either negatively or positively yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, i wish we knew what professor professor i was about to say squirrel squirrel <laughs> <laughs> professor squirrel's office looks like yeah. i think it's probably yeah. just books yeah because he was very he, he was a, a normie <laughs> yeah well <laughs> well with face with value, parasite face, on the back of face value. <laughs> yeah. um <laughs> yeah i mean i'm i'll probably cover this when we see the defense against the dark arts classroom yeah. for the first time each film yeah um but yeah the way that it's really separated to match the character and you know mm-hmm. to match the subject yeah i think it's really cool mm-hmm. oh and like the potions like from snape to slughorn find yeah that quite interesting yeah yeah oh, the potion scots room is so so cool yeah yeah well yeah yeah <laughs> agreed <laughs> just agreed <Yeah. laughs> it's one of my favorite bits in the studio tour as well yeah i yeah. I, I remember really seeing it for cool. the first time with all of like the stirring spoons mm. it's like oh that's so cool <laughs> and, like seeing all of like the writing on the arches and all of yeah. the strange things in the jars so cool. yeah if you're ever at the studio tour I think we might have mentioned this before, but if you ever see an interactor nearby the potions classroom, mm-hmm. ask them if they can show you a close up of some of those jars, because um, yeah. some of them they are allowed to touch, yep. um, unless there's a new rule that they can't because they're older now. But yeah, mm-hmm. as far as we know, yeah. usually they're allowed to touch those. Anyway, so that concludes this episode of Potter Watch from page to screen. Keep twiddling those dials, keep each other safe, keep faith. Good Good night. night. I'm just going to say, what on earth is a squib? Okay, yeah. I think that, I think that, and what on earth is a squib? (laughs) (laughs) That's what's throwing me off. Okay, okay.